So welcome, folks. Um, my name is Andy Rush. I work at the University of North Florida. Um, and this is a presentation that I actually did for something called DS-106 back in, I think it was 2011. And it was for Jim's class. He was teaching one of the sections of it. And so I came in and I, I barfed up everything that I knew about video at the time. Um, and I'm going to do it again 10 years later, okay? <laughs> what, the first thing I want to do, though, is because I'm, ex I'm always experimenting, and so what I want to do is capture you folks in a 360 environment. So I'm going to stand over here, so it's going to take my picture at the same time that it takes all of your pictures. Now, if you don't, and, and this is in all seriousness, if you don't want to have your face in this image, because I would like to publish it on a website, nothing, you know, fancy, just, you know, andyrush.net, which gets millions of visitors per year. Um, I'm just going to do a quick, a quick picture. So if you don't want to be in it, turn your head or cover your face. Five, four, three, two, one. One. Excellent. Thank you for the, I was going to tell people to kind of strike their favorite pose if they wanted to. <laughs> But I forgot. So anyway, we'll save that for posterity. So fast, cheap, and under control has to do with a film that Gardner Campbell showed the DTLT crew um, way back when. And it was this, it, it's an interesting film. If you're, if you're familiar with Errol Morris, he, he likes to kind of talk to people and see what, what characters, you know, and, and the characteristics of people he can bring out. So that's kind of the basis of, of this. What I want to do is make sure that we're under control, all right? So instead of being out of control. Um, so here's me, all right? And a little bit of the stuff that I do on my website. And some of these are kind of old gold video projects that we did. Um, and then another basis for this site, again, is, is, is this idea of being able to, to control a video production. And what I want to do ultimately is, is show you just a resource where you can get all this information um, about codecs, about lots of different pieces. So I'll talk about that and go through these, these slides and, and show you what I'm talking about. All right. One of the things that we talked about quite a bit, and again, I was watching videos of Jim talking about uh, Kirby Ferguson. And I think Jim basically said, the only thing I don't like about this is like he sounds like he's, he's on PBS and, he, and he's, trying to, he's trying to do a fundraiser for his, for his videos. And I, I thought it was hilarious, especially in the time frame of like 10, 11 years ago. Um, but you can watch everything as a, as a remix. What it is is basically it's all those pieces that you put together in a, in a production. Um, and it's just think, like thinking about all the things like sampling video and, and how that stuff either gets copywritten or, or borrowed or stealed. So it's, a, it's an interesting video. Um, but some of the concepts that I talked about way back when were these ideas of, of codecs, if you know what a codec is. And if you don't know what a codec is, I can kind of explain it for you. Um, but also this idea of, of resolution and compression. So all those things kind of make up a video. Um, and the reason that you see the image in the background, those are con like containers from a container ship. So you think about containers. Containers contain the codecs. So you'll have an audio codec and a video codec. And then you also have things like metadata where you've got subtitles or, or data about the video, that kind of thing. All right. Um, what I've done in each one of these slides is just kind of present what I think is the best existing video on YouTube. So this may change. I might find something even better. Um, but, you know, explaining digital video here is a good one. There's one at the very top that says, what is digital video? What video is. He talks about what, what a frame appear 30 times a second, and that's what makes, makes up a film. Sometimes it's 24 frames, sometimes it's 60, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then these other videos are about video compression and what codecs are. And codec is, is a shorthand for co compressor decompressor, or encoder. Four by three aspect ratio, you know, the, the CRT TVs, those were still hanging on, um, but we were going to this thing called widescreen TV with these big cathode ray, ray tubes. Um, and, of course, um, and, it, and it works a lot like um, VLC does. Um, back in the day, MPEG stream clip, Stream clip, anyone? MPEG stream clip? Few of you. Um, the successor, I would say, is this thing's called lossless, lossless cut. And if I have time, I'll do a little demo of it. But if not, you'll really appreciate how it works. And when you, everybody's talking about DaVinci Resolve, right? That's kind of going to be the, the free, it's free, but it's a, a, it's a professional video editor. Um, 
Back then, we were talking about CDs and iTunes. Now we're in the modern technology of vinyl and cassette tapes in, tw in 2023. Yeah. Um, Wirecast Pro was the program that I used to broadcast live the DS106 class that I was in, in Jim's class with. And the, and the link to the video of that, if you want to see that nonsense and how bad I was back then, um, you, can, you can watch that video. It's at the bottom of the, of the resource page that I'll show you. Um, OBS in 2013, OBS in 2023. Um, Photoshop, still kind of in existence, but nobody likes paying the subscription fees, except universities. Everybody's got it at the universities, now they're paying for that. But um, I like a program called Affinity Pro. Affinity Pro is the program that I use when I'm working with my 360 photos because you can go in and you can, like, you can edit out the, the tripod. So when you take a picture here, it's also taking a picture of the stuff on the floor and the tripod. So you don't want the tripod in your picture, so you airbrush it out with, with something like Affinity Pro because it works with what's called equirectangular. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Pixelmator Pro is another great program, a, a much less expensive program than Photoshop paying it once. You know, you pay a monthly fee for Photoshop. Pixelmator Pro is about the same price, and you own it for life. Um, Mac DVD Ripper Pro in the day. Make MKV is the DVD Ripper or Blu-ray Ripper of the day. And what it uses is a container called an MKV or Matroska, and that has the right codex to, uh, to use to play the video. All right. Um, Plex back in the day, I found something called Infuse, which is a little less kind of fluffy and... Workflow. So video workflow, one of the things that we always talk about are, are, is the process of making video. Planning, shooting, editing, encoding, hosting, or publishing is a, is a, is a better word. Um, so I've got a video on Storyboarder, which is a nice little free program, this kind of Hollywood storyboarder. Um, storyboarder. Um, a little bit of like the rules of framing. And again, I, I, I won't say these are the best videos. This guy's a little bit maybe too happy for me, but um, he, he does a good job of explaining kind of the, the techniques and that kind of thing, all right? Um, when it comes to video editors, there are the professional ones, let's say, you know, so the Adobe Premiere Pros, the Final Cut Pros, DaVinci, there's, there's DaVinci Resolve, which is free. There's DaVinci a bit about editing files in QuickTime. So what I do sometimes when I'm filming faculty is even taking QuickTime and chopping off the beginning and end and just saving out that file and it's ready to go. But the lossless cut program that I love so much that replaced MPEG Stream Clip is one of those things where you can actually go in and, and take out chunks and then it will put things together. And it does it in a way that's what we call lossless. It's the idea that you don't have to re-encode and wait fight files and wait fight files, you know, all separated on one SD card because of the 18 minute limit of the, of the codec within the camcorder. So this program will join those very quickly into one file. And then you can like put that in a timeline and, and go from there. So lossless cuts a real, uh, real cool uh, program that I've discovered. And then something on DaVinci Resolve about kind of what it is and, and how great it is, all that kind of stuff. I still haven't switched yet from Final Cut. Just if you've got your, I'm good. So, so you're all set. Um, live streaming solutions. Um, we've got one over here called YoloBox. Um, right now all these sessions are being streamed by YoloBox and basically what it is is a, is a video switcher with, an, with a screen built in. So you literally touch the buttons to switch from, from program to preview or to, you know, from, from shot to shot. And you can bring in things like video screens. You can bring in other audio, microphones, that kind of thing. That, that sort of thing is, is just becoming more one. So some of these live streaming solutions are hardware based. And this is just back in April, we did our inauguration for our president. Um, and that's just a, that's our setup in the background. Um, we use ATEM switchers from Blackmagic and a lot of the Blackmagic equipment. Um, we've got the new studio live streaming program. So on the, on the Windows side, there's something called vMix. Sing, you know, it's, it's not a free program. I think both of them are monthly based subscriptions kind of thing. Um, but if you're doing this with any kind of monetization or whatever, you can kind of re recoup the costs. Um, the long version of this presentation. Um, so green screens. One of the things that, I, that I'm constantly thinking about is like how long are we going to be using green screens in the near future? Because they work really well. If you light them well, you can get an excellent key. But we've got Zoom and other programs that are doing these virtual backgrounds. 
and, and to my eye, they look terrible just because there's all kinds of fringing um, and they're not necessarily, you know, designed for video production quality stuff. But I think we'll get there. You know, I think the object detection and that kind of stuff will get so good that it's like you can put it in a, a crazy busy background and still be able to pick out the foreground and the background of the person and key them out, if you, if you will. So um, this, on the left-hand side, this is an example of a program called Runway ML and the ML is machine language, and it's able to do exactly that. It's basically able to take this busy background and click on this and take it out just like a green screen would. So that's where we're headed with this technology, and it's only going to get better, as we've seen with Alan Levine and how, you know, how, how uh, good his video matched up with his face and all that kind of stuff. So um, We also, at University of North Florida, are working with something called Frame IO, which is an idea that you basically you're filming and you're connected to the network. And as soon as you s press the stop button on your recording, it starts to upload what's called a proxy, not the big honking video file that you've recorded, but a proxy of that that goes into the cloud. And then you start communicating with faculty or whoever else you're collaborating with. And you're able to say, hey, can you cut this at five minutes and 35 seconds and a marker is placed? And can you put a title here at seven minutes and, and such and such place? And then what you've got is... An People look through the glass and speak to their students. Um, and then we flip it around with, a, with another separate box. Um, so I, I just kind of want to touch a little bit about the future and, and AI learning or AI video editing. And just it, it's, it's something that's coming. ...of how it's going to kind of manifest itself. Um, I just I think there's both great and scary 
uh, consequences from, from some of these technologies. Um, the other thing that I want to do is, and hopefully this is something that will be helpful for folks and something that, that people can use as a reference, but also by all means, um, if you want to add to it um, something that you use. So basically the list is, um, let me just make sure, yeah, so the list is just a list of equipment that I've used in the past 10 years or so of things that I know work, um, things that do different things. So there's lots of different types of cameras, including you know, 360 cameras and standard cam quarters or cameras, or what we call PTZ cameras or pan tilt zoom cameras like, like these guys. This is just a list of hardware and software that I've used in the past that I just find are really useful. Okay, so this is a separate web page that I'll show you in just a second. Um, but this will give you an idea of, of kind of what's, what's here and what's available. And you can ask me about, well, why did you recommend this and didn't recommend the Sony camera? And I'll, you know, I'll tell you. Um, I'm happy to answer any kind of question like that. Um, but that's the end of the, of the slide portion of, of this presentation. And this is all done in Elementor, by the way. So if you're familiar with Elementor, this is just on top of WordPress. And it's basically like a slideshow mode where it shows a screen at a time. Um, so again, it was me experimenting. It's not that that's all ex that exciting to you, but I was glad that, that it, it did ultimately work. So let me just show you the, the list. So again, just all the, all the links of, there's webcams and microphones, um, light them as well. Here to record, John Barker, he's another kind of ATEM streaming uh, guy. He's written some software to do titling and that kind of thing. Um, Matthew Vandepute is uh, like a time-lapse expert. So there's kind of just a range of different guide, um, but they also do like other types of cameras and, and that sort of thing. So let me just switch back to, um, this, is the, this is the thing that I just showed you in the slideshow. It's all of the stuff about all of the things and it, this is why I didn't show you this during the presentation, um, but you can go to the very end and see the original Fast, Cheap, and Under Control slideshow video and uh, be entertained. How many times you've done it, what's your takeaways in terms of general <laughs> strategies for when you're thinking through this process from the ground up? Yeah, I, I hate, I, I don't know what, if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, there's only, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. There's only one studio that I'm not proud of, and I'll just leave it there. <laughs> um, what I did in the, in the very beginning when, when I started getting into this in DTLT and I found my niche of, of video is I set up a, a, a green screen studio over at CGPS, the other, the other campus, and I don't even know if that's another campus anymore. Is it? Sort of, kind of? I mean, there's a building. Okay. All right. At least it's still standing. Um, so I built a couple of studios over there, and all. And by studio, I mean something very similar to the one downstairs, um, with a green carpet or a green, you know, uh, fabric on stands with lights. Um, and I did that a couple of times. The first time I used the fabric, and the second time I painted the wall. And I said, "Oh, the wall really works well." And so for the most part, I've I've had green walls that I've that I've dealt with in these studios. Um, but I built those with my idea that I that I was under control with. I was step by step by step. And so at UNF, I I, I had a I inherited a green wall room that I used as a studio and learned from that. And then I built the next one because we needed to have kind of like an a la one button studio type thing. And I learned that one button's not enough. Um, you need to have more than one button to control all that stuff and actually allow faculty to do their own presentations. Um, and then took it again flat. It was a tiered classroom with tiered seating and then two monitors up front and then a big whiteboard in the center. So then they put three PTZ, PTZ cameras in the room and they filmed those recordings. And it's like, wow, that's exciting. Um, and so I said, you know, let's, let's, let's get this out of one trick pony realm. Let's get it into something that's got stations, if you will. So you've got a green screen station that you can film at and you can do virtual stuff with virtual backgrounds. And then you step to the right and you, or your left and you see the, white, or, yeah, the light board behind a black background and they're writing on it with different colors and we'll, they're filming that. 
and we can include any of those into the production. Or you know, we could we could do all of it live and go from the light board to the green screen and back again. And then we've got if you turn to your right, your left, you, um, you'll see what I call the podcast set. So we can either do just a standard audio podcast, but we've also got cameras that can be trained on that space. So you can have either a single camera or multiple cameras or three PTZ cameras to get every angle you could possibly want. So we can also do video podcasts as well. And then we clear that table out and we put two ferns down and we have <laughs> a, a TV show set with a bookshelf in the background. So it's the idea obviously is is not just recording classroom lectures. And we can set up the classroom for classroom le lectures if we want to. Um, but the idea is that we just we throw everything possible and we're still figuring out what's possible by adding these different pieces. I've got a telestrator that I'm building um, so they can you know, highlight over live video and, and have that recorded. Um, we've got higher quality green screen stuff, that sort of thing. So it's a flexibility is kind of the, the name of the game. Yeah. Right. And it just seems like in the year of our Lord, 2023, <laughs> webcams still suck. Yeah. And like sometimes I see like some people and I'm like, well, damn, like Gardner sounded amazing. Like, but he had that big microphone and so did Alan. And so yep. like they sounded great. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll see people and you're like, clearly they're using some fancy camera. Right. W what would you recommend for somebody who's like, my start to video is going to be right in front of my computer. Yeah. But I want it to be better than just opening up a really crappy webcam. Right. To do something. Well, and that's part of my point too, is that there's a, there's the idea of like the beginner video set right. and the intermediate video set and the advanced video set. So, but there's some really high quality stuff that you can do with a beginner set, like a beginner webcam. Insta360, the company that makes these 360 cameras also makes a webcam that's really good and actually has a PTZ webcam. So you can set it on your, on your computer or on your desktop or whatever. And it also has like a tie into a whiteboard system. So like you tell it where the whiteboard is and it's able to move through that. And then I think it even records, like it reads the words and records it and saves it, stuff like that to give you a transcript, I think. I might be mixing technologies, but it's, it's, I mean, that idea certainly is possible, right? So let's imagine it and think that it does it. Um, and then there's other ones that, that are very similar that, that are just really high quality. And, and the, old, the, the classic webcam is like the Logitech C920. If you Google that, you'll find it everywhere, and you'll find it's still popular, and it's been in use for like 15 years. Um, so that's the kind of thing. And then as far as microphones go, these things are great. The Rode goes, the Rode Wireless goes because they can easily just set in the cold shoe of the camera and be the wireless transmitter and you run the audio cable into the camera and record your, your video like that. But we've also talked about these either boom poles where you can put the wireless end on the end of the boom pole and then you know the other end, the, the receiver on the next to the camera and use it as a bo wireless boom pole kind of thing. Or they've got the little handheld Rode microphone clippy thing. It looks like a, like a, a handheld mic with a little foam top, but underneath it is the Rode Go microphone. So it's cool stuff like that that they're able to kind of you know, get these technologies to do. And I'm, I'm just, you know, it's a great time to be alive in the video production world because of all the technologies. There's, to there's so many things that I didn't mention that I didn't get to in terms of, you know, technologies. We've switched from HDI ba HDMI based video production to SDI based. And it's basically like a cable, almost like the cable that you had in your, in your cable system back when cable was a thing. Um, and then we've also gone to these technologies like NDI, which is a networked interface where you've got a video feed going out to all the places over a local LAN and you can get video feeds from that. So video feeds from a computer where it's doing a screen capture and video feeds from other types of cameras. Um, and then you can monitor all that stuff and bring all that stuff into a production just like it was an HDMI or an SDI cable. Um, so that, is that it? We're at the end. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, and I, I, I think we can do... Well, we have a 15-minute break now. So okay, so if you, if you want to stay for questions or you want to see me afterwards, um, by all means. What I do want to make sure that you know is that um, the Digital Media Cookbook, so digitalmediacookbook.com is where you can find the list and you can find the information on the... Uh, fast, cheap, and under control website. Um, 
This is a project, digitalmediacookbook.com. This is a project that I started right before I taught or I was in Jim's class, um, where it was just here's how you do lots of things, and it's kind of a recipe that you follow. Like you get all the ingredients, i.e., the camera, the microphones, the lights, and then here are the steps that you take to do the thing. And it's not up to date in any way, except for a few things that I've that I've posted over the last few years. Um, but I hope to kind of revive its its place in in at least a, a, a reference place or a resource that folks can use. So. Um, Why did you tell people about the naked mole rat? Because he's kind of scary. <laughs> it's he. It's when they have millions of them. So <laughs> in, where the naked mole rat lives, he doesn't need any hair and he doesn't need any eyesight. So. Um, and so, so again, this is the fast, cheap, and out of control video or movie that um, uh, Errol Morris did. But there's a review from uh, Roger Ebert at the time. And Roger e Ebert, I don't, it's kind of coincidental, but he passed away in 2013 of, 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 of all years. But um, he talks about this, and I do want to show you a quote at, at the end of this because it's really funny. But it's basically about all these kind of crazy people, scientists, and, and other people that are doing these unique skills. But all, a lot of the stuff that they do is like out of their control. They have, they have, no, they have no idea like when it's going to rain with the topiary gardener and things like that. So it's just a fascinating video to kind of talk to these people and what they do on a daily basis and how it's like, I have no idea what it's going to do today. One of the last questions Ebert talks to Morris about is, is what next film he's doing. And he says, I'm preparing a film, he said, about an electric chair repairman. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> that, should be, that should be a happy story, but an interesting interview, right? And the other thing that I do want to mention is that Errol Morris, for, the, for this video, invented this, this thing called the Interatron. Just mash it together and make it, and they point to, a, what's his name, the British, um, Adam Curtis. Adam Curtis, yeah. Yeah. Because, you okay. know, he doesn't make a frame. Right. right. It's, it's entirely based on that. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's not ever since. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think Jim will agree with me and the other. I don't know who else was in was in the room. I think Martha and Jerry were there, watching watching this film back in the day, and it had a big in, impact on me, obviously, because I went out and I made I made a website about it. So, <laughs> thanks everybody. Appreciate it. <laughs>